What up, Cal? Man. Man. What is going on? Nothing, dude. We're enjoying our week. The mommy o is in town. She's going to be here until tomorrow. Mm, my mom's going to leave. Oh. How often does she get to visit? So we haven't seen each other in three years. Oh, uh, yeah. Or yeah. She, hasn't, yeah, she hasn't been able to come down here for like three years. Flying yeah. over from Ireland and everything else like that. But you know, Our plane tickets nowadays for that kind of flight. <laughs> well, it's still stupid because internal flights in the US are still almost as expensive as like international travel. It's like when you're in Europe, it's like, oh, 25 euro to go to Spain one way. It's like, all right, check. Whoa. Oh, yeah, seriously. Like if you look at the prices for like Ryanair and stuff like that to go fly to, you know, different places in Europe or whatever, go to Berlin one day. It's like it's a. A, a ridiculous <laughs> difference in price. Like. It's crazy. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that. But here it's like $480 just to fly to bloody yeah. Chicago one way. And I'm like, yeah, for sure. What are we doing? Wait, has it has it always been like that? Even pre-pandemic and stuff? Mm-hmm. Or you, wow. Okay. Yeah, fly, flying that. around Europe is usually just cheaper. I just, you know what I mean? For whatever reason. Price yeah. tolerances, I don't know. You know what I mean? But, I mean, obviously you can get deals here and there every now and again for all of the stuff, but... Yeah, it's definitely just, you know, it's not that bad. But look, re you know, reality is, like, flying internationally, it's still a grand. You know what I mean? You're still spe yeah. spending the money all over time and then and everything else. But it's just nice that my mom can get here. It's, it is. Yeah, it's genuinely sure. nice. But, uh, yeah, that's why we couldn't do one on Tuesday or Wednesday, our regular day. I always think that it's Tuesday and I wake up in a panic being like... <laughs> <laughs> and then I look at my calendar. I'm like, no, 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 it's not today. It's not today. It's like it's like school. It's so again. It's like, oh no! Am I supposed to be in class right now? <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never learn at all. Calendars don't work That's for me. Fun. Um, for me, and this 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 leads to what uh, we want to talk about today in terms of Activision Blizzard. So uh, our monthly tournament. Nerd uh, rage. <laughs> I don't want to get to the nerd rage. <laughs> our our monthly uh, game tournament, uh, so it feature it happened uh, last weekend, and it features a mystery game tournament, tournament where you play a different game and you have no idea what it's gonna be. I swear to God, I'm coming down. You gotta fucking preempt <laughs> well, me a couple let, of let days. Me, and let I'm me coming down. Well, let's see if you're prepared. So I lost. I I rarely lose. What? It's my, the game I lost that. Show me the VOD. I need it. <laughs> yeah. It was the second game. The second game was Tony Hawk. The new one. Oh. And, uh, it, it still plays like all of them. It still plays like all of them. Okay. So the question is, how good are you at Tony Hawk? Like, pretty good. Well. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm, so, I'm not... Pr well, okay. I think I'm... The, the, I'm like... Here's the reality, right? Growing up at a time when you none of these things were online and all you had was your friends, yeah. you said, like, I'm pretty good at Tony Hawk. Yeah, and then yeah, all yeah. of a sudden you meet some other kid and he fucking staunches you and you're just like, ah, shit. Like, <laughs> you don't know what good is, but it's like, yeah, like, I can link together some combos and hold a balance bar for a minute. I know I know the, re, you know, revert fucking just keep the combo going tricks yeah. you know what i mean for sure so you, you would have done probably decently well um because it's exactly like that like they revealed the game and everyone's like oh yeah i played this game i'm pretty good so it was just like all right who who here has has uh still has the muscle memory yeah. from you know 20 30 years ago whatever <laughs> it's um, the same game <laughs> What are we doing? <laughs> it sucked for me because I played it on PC, so I had no uh, muscle memory. I played it on keyboard, actually. Oh, that's nasty. <laughs> Even though I, I, I mentally knew what to do. Um, How did you do that? It didn't. <laughs> it didn't matter because my opponent played all the Tony Hawks, but you know I was still pretty good at two. Uh, I played two a lot. I, I could hit. I remember hitting million a million points on combos. But anyways, that, it was just a fun experience because everyone has played the game. There's no excuses. It was just a matter of who was the best there. So dumb, that, dumb. that was fun. Yeah, did they did they start whipping out like the gold com like golden moves? Just I, constantly I don't think, all over the I, place. Or what? <laughs> I don't think anybody had that much muscle memory or recently played it, but people were stringing some uh, decent combos. I think somebody hit a uh, hundred k combo. I don't know if the scoring's only across yeah yeah 100k could, sounds yeah really yeah. small like yeah usually it was like back in the day it was always multipliers that i always gave a crap about right 
because uh, every move that every trick you made gave you yeah. an extra multiplier so it's like it was this was this was my strat this is it this is my entire fucking game okay strat. Okay. okay get on the board run jump onto something right jump off of something do a trick mash double tap like all of the the face buttons right just mash the buttons before you hit the ground go into a manual manual to the next thing get onto a rail uh. on the rail do, 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 just mash the face buttons square square xx circle circle triangle triangle just just keep moving around constantly just make new tricks all the time and just keep increasing that multiplier it never mattered what you were at, what move you were actually making just as long as you didn't fall and you just kept making new moves that was it that was the whole goal okay I'll tell you where I went wrong then. I would do a manual, and then I tried to kickflip in between manuals. I was like, I could have swore I used to do this, but oh, I fell down like every time, yeah. and I um, that that killed me. Yeah. Is that a thing you're supposed to do? Nah, I would mani yeah. I would mani yeah. pad in I'd mani pad in and like, into the to the next thing, but then that I would, makes sense. I would kick into the next move, but I would never try to kick into another manual unless it was like a yeah. bigger drop. My my understanding is if you're like, you can probably do it maybe, but I I think that the timing is weird. Like, the kickflip into another manual, it's a risky play, dude. It's a risky yeah, play. especially I felt I fell down like fifteen times doing this, but I kept doing it, so I must have had some muscle memory in the old ones to keep keep trying it. That's so funny. So that got me killed. It was super fun. And uh, uh, the last game. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, what which uh which thing was that in? Was this uh semis was this quarterfinals was this that was round? the second second round of four so i got knocked down relatively early mm -hmm. what was the other game uh we had street fighter there's lethal league but the last one was bomberman see oh bomberman now <laughs> bomberman i have hundreds of hours in. That that's was like that's chess dude that's chess <laughs> this ain't checkers anymore that's chess Oh my that was God. like my second most played uh, multiplayer game as a, as a kid. I, I definitely loved it. Did they have power ups or was it straight Bomberman yeah, yeah. one bomb? Uh, so they the, one of the guys kept picking stage ten, and stage ten across all Bombermans is the most is a stage with no power ups. It nice. starts you off with everything. So uh, one person picked that stage once. So it, it was a, it was a variety. Yeah, that's but hard. there was power ups. Ooh. I, that must have been fun. I kind of want to watch that because, yeah. Yeah. yeah, where people fake people out with bombs and just try to fucking box people. In. Yeah, yeah. One person picked a stage that had holes in it where you teleport, and that that already screwed all the. Oh god! Up. Yeah, that's hard. Oh my gosh! All right, yeah, Bomberman was... with portals. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, yeah, I, I brought up that because I was thinking of Activision, and that's kind of what we want to talk about today is uh, Blizzard with Overwatch is uh introducing they announced their their plans for how they're gonna monetize overwatch and they're doing a loot box no, no i'm sorry they're 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 getting ri rid of loot boxes they're going free to play and they're going in on battle passes and the thing that makes this battle pass different than other games from what i understand um is that the characters are in the battle pass and so you have to kind of grind to get it uh, I was especially looking at Reddit, and Reddit was really going crazy about this because. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's okay. I, I have no idea how they did their calculations, but somebody was like, "Oh, I'm gonna need to do 20 hours of grinding to get a character free to play." Um, to do this, and certainly 20 hours can be a lot, d depending on uh, you know your life situation. Yeah, or so, it's you know 20 hours is. 22 games you know yeah. if it's 45 minutes a game or something like that then it's you know let's let's just say it's somewhere in around 22 to 25 games depending on the right. hours or the you know, <laughs> actually when the you, XP when grind you, or whatever when you frame it that way just 20 <laughs> games or uh that well no no so overwatch games are more like i think they take 15 minutes maybe just 30. 15 minutes well I, i'm sorry a competitive one a competitive one is like an hour because you have to play yeah. back and forth yeah you're right um, and the last thing I'll say about that is if you do decide to purchase it, as of now, you get the character instantly. Um, so I guess it's worth talking about is like, I think a lot of people do forget that Overwatch 1 was a 
forty dollar game. Yeah, yeah, I do for sure. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Same, same here. But with that said, um, assuming a battle pass is fifteen dollars, that's going to be uh, three battle passes before it's the same price as what you paid for Overwatch One. Yeah, and you know that for a fact that it's going to be more... Like, I feel like it's going to be more expensive because they're putting the main character behind the whole thing then, yeah. too, plus cosmetics, plus everything else, and it's, like, that brand new, freshy content. But, like, let's just talk over, like, the problems of new character releases and MOBAs in general, okay? Especially in free-to-play MOBAs. So one of the things that they talk about is competitive integrity. In Ooh. new MOBA, or, you know, in casual MOBAs or whatever, right? Like, let's just say a la League of Legends, because I've played that for forever... There used to be a problem. Maybe they've solved this now because I haven't gone back to that crack of a game. I'm not doing it. It's heroin, and I'm not going there ever again. <laughs> not a chance. The When a new character would come out, it would go straight into the marketplace. You could premium purchase it, or you could soft currency purchase it for a really high price. Now, if you're an active player, and you're at max level, and you've been playing for a while, you've probably built up a decent amount of that currency already, right? So that new character doesn't really sink out as enough currency that you're going to generate between character releases. So, you, so most players have a balance that is already like actively high when that character comes out. Most players are. Or at least if you look at, you know what I mean, the people who are really hardcore playing the game or whatever, right? Like they've, they've got that 700 or 7,800 IP points or right. I mean, it's not riot points, but... Right, so automatically the game, the character goes live, most people can just buy it. And that's great, because usually it's not the character you want to be the barrier of entry into the title. Uh, you want players to be playing with that character because you want the, the monetization is, is the depth of spend on skins after the fact, right? But it does lead into this, this whole negative experience whenever a new character comes out by everybody wants to play that character so now you have 10 players that are all going into a game and they are all trying to insta lock that new character in whatever position that they're in it doesn't matter where they are it doesn't matter what they're doing it's like if i'm first pick and the new character is out and i want to play that character i'm insta locking that that new character so that i can take that away like that ends up putting a negative impact then on all of the other players within the you know the framework right like Especially if you're in competitive integrity and only one of those characters can be active at one time. Because in League of Legends, you can take that character directly into ranked play instantly. Which has an entire different thing to like shake up the um, shake up the balance of, of that, right? Because nobody's seen the character, nobody really knows what they do, everybody's trying to learn this thing. So it can make battles really, really swingy. Like if that player is playing a brand new character and doesn't understand how that character works, then they might either go Super Saiyan, kill everybody because nobody knows how that character works, and then this dude figures out one combo that's like, oh, I'm murdering everybody. Or it's the opposite. They don't know the ranges. They don't know what the character really does. They don't know how to use it properly, so their positioning's really bad. Their spatial awareness is bad. Their utility is bad. And then they die all the time. And that this used to happen, like, an annoying amount of times, where, like, somebody would insta-lock a new character, die three to five times, and then it, within the first, like, ten to fifteen minutes of the game, and then just, like, fucking AFK leave, and you're like, what the f what the hell, man? What the hell? How, how often did you, uh, insta-lock a new character? Oh, maybe a few times. Maybe a few times. <laughs> maybe I uh, plead the fifth. Uh, no comment. No comment. No comment okay. at all. Yeah, we uh, gotta I, erase this before the riot police <laughs> come, uh, come get you. I actually was pretty good about it, to be perfectly honest. Because I didn't care. When a new character came out, um, I always figured out like how to play around those characters first, rather than trying to play them. There was never really a character that gripped me necessarily. Like, Well, there probably was, but new character releases didn't grip me in the same way. They were always cool. You know, like, oh yeah, nice, what's the new hotness or whatever. But, uh... I was never super, super, super intrigued. But what I would do, my play patterns would change. I wouldn't do ranked play for at least like two weeks. And I would just go and play in the sandbox of, you know, just casual play. I would see what's up because everybody would be playing that new character. And then there'd be two per team. So you would kind of see 
positive and negative and then one on one and everything everything like that at the same time people would just experiment more with the item builds because you know what i mean everybody's building differently and everybody wants to just go like crazy with with certain things so but let's you know i mean to get back into it right the the bigger thing there is is that that opening moment can be great but really bad when the floodgates are really heavy right everybody's trying to play this thing at one time and only one person can play it so then it it doesn't feel that good right i, I like this explanation it reminds me of traffic in general like now you're getting traffic jams but are you saying that this loop uh this battle pass alleviates the traffic it tries to i, I do believe that it seems to try to do that right in the in the sense that if you really want this character and you really want it the moment that it comes out, you gotta spend the premium bucks. Now, does that is that good? Is that bad? It's kind of nasty, but it does put a blocker on how many people are gonna be have access to that character yeah. instantly. It's like a it's like a new toll lane that opens up on a highway. <laughs> so yeah. you want to go fast, you better pay for this. Exactly, but if you're that free to play grinder that just doesn't want to spend any money at all, doesn't care about any of the skins or any of the things along the way, that thing is going to be in tier 55, as they, they pronounced, out of, all, let's say, out of 100 or whatever, 110, if it's like the the Fortnite or bundle or like the Halo bundles or something like that. Like, to be honest, I don't know how long the battle passes are going to go. Nobody does. So, like, saying 55 is, like, such a friggin' abstraction away from time. It's right. ridiculous, but... Let's say that that's at least, at least, two, three weeks of play, right? Of, like, grinding play, you know what I mean? Now we're talking about three to five games per day that i got to be playing in order to get that XP. Maybe the, there's obviously bonuses from daily rewards or whatever like that that we could be getting. Maybe, I don't know. Um, but it takes that, it takes that, let's, you know what I mean? It takes the pressure off of the soft currency sink as well. Because if I'm going to be getting it free out of the, the thing, then it, it is just purely a retention mechanic then at that point. Retention engagement yeah. mechanic. If you want that new hotness and you want that new thing and you want it for free right now, you know, uh, within the next two weeks or whatever, you got to be playing. you got to be playing. And as you're playing and you're trying to salivate, you're waiting, waiting, and waiting, and you're, you're watching other people who have spent money to get that character... But those are the players who have it first, which is going to be the payer percentage, which payer percentages are already just a sliver of, of the market. So the more you salivate, the more you might convert. The more you, you know, like convert early. The earlier you convert, the longer tail you have within that battle pass, the more things. Uh, the later you are in the battle pass, let's say you get to like thirty level 35 and the battle pass is about to end or in like the next eight days and you just know you're not going to make it to 55 but you want that new character, is that the new car from Rocket League? Is that how then we get you to convert over to a spender yeah. then there? But in that moment, it's not like a good purchase. It, it doesn't necessarily feel like an awesome purchase because if I didn't care about any of the premium track up to that point, then I only care about the North Shiny Star because that's what we do in, in Battle Passes, right? You build it around very specific items. It's It's... Everything else doesn't matter, but it's the things that are down the track that you're building towards. That, For that, sure. Those are the, there's very clear north stars that players want. That, that, those are your tracking goals for like really later retention to get the player through the thing. Halo Infinite's first one was the flaming armor. It's like, you need to get this, Like of course. like If you played Halo 3 and you had Hypusa armor, like, you have to get that. So yeah. it's at the end of the track. You know which one was at the end of the Multiverses track for their first season? No, what was it? And it almost got me to buy it. It was the Bugs Bunny Viking outfit from, like, the, the, oh, the that's opera. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah, the opera episode or whatever. Damn. So it was like, almost got me. You guys almost got me. <laughs> that is kind of great. Go ahead. Uh, but, so, to yeah, to get back into it. So, when you, premium track, you can get it instantly free-to-play track you're gonna have to grind you're grinding but you're watching other people playing so you're learning that character as the opposite of watching what that thing does but you can see now how then they also then dropped the character from competitive play for the first whatever amount of time so you can only play that character in the more casual things i think that's actually a great change personally um i don't think that you know it, it the amount of disruption a new character brings to ranked play 
is like hell, right? Like, yeah, that's very thing. I've never seen. I've never seen somebody do that. Yeah. So I, in my opinion, I think this is great. Actually, a great play for Blizzard, right? Like it. It is. It is trying to, you know, I mean, as they say in their thing, it's great for their goals, right? If they want players to convert over to the newer thing and they're focusing all the monetization around that battle pass, getting people into that battle pass, recurring things. Because here's the other thing is what, what I haven't seen, I don't know what happens, right? But um, most battle passes, once you reach the end, you're usually given enough premium currency to purchase the battle pass for the next season. That is that's a Fortnite standard that's a um that was a call of duty standard as well too uh and the the play there is is that if you reach the end as a premium user you've spent your five bucks once but you've played the entire way through and you've gained all of those rewards as as you've gotten so now you've gained five dollars worth of rewards so then as a retention mechanic you're going to put that five dollars into the next battle pass and then do the same thing until the end, or less. And if you don't do that, well, then you're going to have to spend that $5 on the next season. Whereas, if I just keep playing, I am doing the free-to-play track as the purchasee, right? Because players who spend money are usually just... They're trying to buy back their own time, right? I'm trying to spend cash so that I can get this thing now, and I don't have to grind for it. But, in the premium track, we still have to grind, we still have to play, we still have to do things. So I'm spending five bucks to get all of these rewards, potentially, still. So I still put, I still need to work at that. Um, so is it uh, as soon as you drop off, like if you fail to complete it one month, then you have to rebuy and get back on the streak? Is usually, yeah, okay, usually, right? So like at the very end of the track, you're, you're kind of given enough of that premium currency that you can reinvest that in. Awesome. So it's like taking that... I finished everything. I did it all. I was sat at the computer, mom. I was here. I did, I did, I did it, right? But like, as my mom makes coffee over there. But <laughs> uh, but that's, you know what I mean? So that as a retention mechanic is great because like the payers just wants, wants to pay, but they'll pay, but they won't finish the track. So it's like value for money. Like if, what am I getting out of this, right? Like I'm spending five bucks to get like the first five rewards and then there's you know 55 tiers of things it's like i'm not getting those right um unless i play and if i don't play and i just spend that money then why did i spend that money in the first place right um and that's a problem problem position right because it's it's in the nice obviously the point of the battle pass is engagement it's continuous engagement across a longer right. period of time <laughs> now does all of this like really respect the player's time I don't know. I mean, if I do want that thing right now, I, I have access to it. I have a path to that. But at the same time, it's like, you know, for the free-to-play player or the player who doesn't necessarily want to go really deep, you know, you're going to have to, sp you're going to have to spend time. You know I mean? It's going to, it's going to be a minute for you to, to get that character. Like, this is also a really big flip. Not, you know I mean? If you have anything else, please go in, because I'm about to... No, no, they're right. good. This is good stuff. There's also a really big flip in terms of... Uh, well, because of the access the access to the character, it is a big flip away from, from the industry standard of depth of spend on character. And it is good, at least, that they are putting that thing into the marketplace later on for hopefully a soft currency amount, right? But if, you know, the big confusion is if that thing goes away, then, you know what I mean? Okay, thank you. Thank you. I bring bra coffee. Awesome. Okay. But if that character goes away out of the battle pass, like, where does it go, right? Like, when does it come back? How do I get this thing? And my, my thinking is it's just going to go directly into the store for a soft currency amount. And... If it does, then great. But if it doesn't, and we have to now get this thing through different ways, access to the character pool is going to be limited, right? Like, fairly limited for, for most of those users. And I do wonder then, like, 
how accumulation of the catalog over time, because you don't want to block the players from having fun. You don't want to block the players from new content, from new things. But this is putting a very big, you know, milestone marker in front and saying, hey, you, you just can't get the new hotness. And it came out a month ago, and now you can get it, right? Um, I think I saw somewhere, I don't know if it, it was this game, that it'll come into the pool a year later. Uh, Whoa, a year later? I, 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 I don't know if I saw this for Overwatch 2 or if this was a different game. But I do know that they said you would be able to obtain it through, quote, special quests. So it doesn't sound like a soft currency. It sounds like, hey, you didn't have time to grind this out uh, back in 2022. Well, in 2023, you got to grind it out through these quests or something. That's my assumption. You know, So you got to spend time either way. You're trying to make characters like heroes, right? Big, big heroes and big personalities, big names. Everything's crazy, right? But, um, you know, how do you block people from getting Ken out of Street Fighter for a year, yeah. you know, without that not feeling bad. And I, yeah. I think that there's going to be some massive concessions there in terms of time to content. Um, because, you know, I mean, if, if I can't just earn general new characters and new play, and I don't like the characters that are there and automatically available, or I don't like the, the free rotation... Maybe it comes up in the free rotation or something like that every now and again, but oh, you're right. It then, might do that. Yeah, you know, then they okay, do but like, I don't own that, so I have no object permanence. I have no way of like getting really better at that character or anything like that. You know what I mean? So, I think you're right. At least it does have a free rotation. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So, I I think that this is again great for Blizzard. I think it, it actually solves some of these major these issues that I would call bigger issues with, you know, with standardized MOBA, you know, mechanics or, or entry. It does reframe the character balance, you know, into, um, into I can't just, I can't just, you know, I mean, well, okay, I was gonna say you can't just grind to get the soft currency to then buy a new character to buy the character. And, you know, that pool, like, is the same pool as before. So I'm always grinding and I always have that same amount of money. But if I've, yeah, if, like, if I'm just not attaching to the characters that are in the store, it's a bigger problem. But, you know, then are there no new characters going into the store within things? Like, you know, how often can I get that newer content? But if you're a newer player, you're always, you're probably going to see a bunch. I'm hoping that there's at least 35 characters that it's going to be in the actual store itself and you'll start with you know five of those and it'll move to 10 towards the end of the tutorial when, whenever you've hit that top level cap of like was it like level 30 or something like that then you'll uh you'll probably have access to at least most of the roster at that point from a free-to-play perspective in terms of just grinding get soft currency from daily quests spend that in the marketplace get new characters and then as then new things trickle in you're probably still backfilling on other things, but when you're up against that gap, the only thing that there is to do is just keep playing, keep playing, keep playing, and get onto that thing. So I, I actually think that in general, the structure is actually decent. It's not bad at all. And it's going to work in Blizzard's favor here. But, you know... That part, I, yeah. Power to the players? I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want it now! <laughs> Why can't I have it now? Yeah, yeah, Fire. yeah. That, that's the other side. Yeah. But no, I like your perspective. I didn't, I didn't really think about it from the, like the structure of the game and how the game flows in terms of competitive play and, and bringing that in. And also, there is one more other part: is they're making the game more balanced and not having hard counters, which that I think at is least bullshit. That e I think is absolute <laughs> bullshit. I it, no. For real, that's been a big. Uh, that's been something they've talked about for years. Uh, they haven't done it, so it's at, it's not a last minute thing. I'll, I'll tell you that. Um, I have a I have a friend who's like a competitive Overwatch player, so he fills me in on, on it a lot, and he's like, "Yeah, this is this has been a, a, a it's a an, constant a battle." Because yeah, the, here's yeah. here's the thing: is like they're supposed to be kind of rock paper scissors yes. shotgun, right? Like it, it, it's supposed to be this crazy grouping of okay when we do these combos that's my win condition yeah and i'm gonna yeah. take something and i'm gonna aim for this to 
because that counters this win condition yeah. within these things. That is just how we're always going to look at it. That's It's not always just how we design the games, it's just how we find the combinations. You can make an entire character roster that is just random, right? Every character has no role. We're just we're just playing against the 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 clips of what's cool, right? And we're just making things, making things, making things. The players will still find hard counters against other things. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's in ability design where we're going to see that. And if we don't see that, we're going to see too much homogenization of the gameplay itself. If every character is available at all times and is is useful in almost every role, then what is the point of of team structure then how do we even balance around any of those things or how do we figure those things out now from a balanced perspective and philosophy right i you will find when these things come down established metas will happen established team rosters will happen around better win conditions depending on the map objective right whether it's payload kill you know capture whatever it is right Different things will, will automatically surface to be better or worse than others in, in different scenarios. And that's the nice thing then, at least about Overwatch, is that because of this defend-attack mentality and this ability to switch out characters in, in between in the game, I can have that ability of saying, no, 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 this is my defensive team for this map objective, and this is my attacking team for this map objective. So that tries to spread you across the box. But this is just a... I think is is in a lot of ways, is just a wall that you're trying to hit. Now, whether or not that this is, you know what I mean, it's, it's just not something that you can necessarily, like, say that we're oh. going to do and think that it's going to be sure, an easy sure. thing to do. I don't I don't see it being, being that great. Um, like, even in Brawl Stars, right? Brawl Stars it, for mobile by um, Supercell has a massive character roster, 3v3... We don't really care about win condition. It's more about the fun of the individual character and how well that does and how well the mastery of the player, you know, the player can self-identify into that character's ability set, that they like that, they feel support, they feel comfortable around that thing. And that's like their their kind of philosophy, right? Keep putting out cool characters that are that are nice. And if Blizzard tries to do that, it still will formulate around the same thing of like, oh, well, that's a ranged character and the ranged character then only shoots one or two bullets and they're more based around accuracy and mastery or around you know uh aiming and timing and positioning and everything like that well great um, you know a melee assassin might still wreck that character right like that that rock paper scissors is not doesn't go away overnight so whether this is just them trying to shift their their balance perspective and their new character balance and saying hey we have all of these rocks and we have all these papers and all these scissors which is the next one that we need um, and that used maybe used to be their thing where they had more predefined well like actually no this character is going to come in here to counter x y and z and that's that's fine too like that they used to be how you would how you would do it but these days it's more like what's the newest team comp what's the comp that's has the highest win rate oh why god are, yeah why are they, that's definitely how they did that yeah, before like, why are they winning what is like what's strong about them and is there any weaknesses within their thing? Okay, well then let's build something that counters that weakness or, you know, like it, it exploits that weakness and then all of a sudden becomes, you know, the, the linchpin of the counter to that to that team. And then that's how, how you end up with the, like, really hard counters of, like, if you're playing this character and they're playing that character, you're just dead. You just, you just you're useless. That's a sucky feeling, but, like, that's kind of then how those those gears are turning you know but i don't know all the power to them I, d I don't see it i don't see that being necessarily like something super viable in terms of like saying that it's going to happen i think that that actually just comes out of a deeper roster you actually yeah. just if you have more ability to choose different characters that play similar roles but act differently within those roles um then i think that you will find that there's more gameplay within the role itself, right? So, like, uh, League of Legends, mid lane, you can play assassins, you can play supports, you can play safety characters. I always loved playing Orianna. Orianna's, like, a 
has like a, a zoning ball that, that allows you to have some map control, is kind of a support character, but also can do a, a decent amount of damage. So it's a great like overall mid-range caster. But then some people will just play hardcore melee assassins into that in into it all. And depending on how well they can play into that character, then you know what I mean, that's all up to the individual mastery of the of the, the player itself. But those differences there are what changes up gameplay in my opinion. So it's yeah. just give me more options, give me more tools in the toolbox to fit that role, you know? Uh, yeah, and, and like you pointed out, obviously this, this is really hard. You don't just snap your fingers and say, "Oh yeah, we have a balanced game now." But it is. I mean, it's well, it is. Perma- well, they'll call MOBAs like permanently imbalanced. You I mean there's not there's never really a balanced sure. MOBA, you know? Yeah, yeah. But like, if the philosophy at the heart of the game is to say, "Hey, let's uh, let's stop doing rock paper scissors," verse what they were before, as you pointed out, which is hey, we need hard counters. Uh, I think at least the philosophy will bubble up and, uh, and you know, affect the overall balance in the end, mm-hmm. even if it's not perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I brought that up because if, in theory, let's just say you have a balanced game, then if you're, uh, if you can't pick and choose your characters, it's a, it's a little bit more um, okay. Whereas if, if you couldn't and you're just like locked to these certain characters with counters, it'd be definitely extra frustrating because now you're getting countered and you have like actually no answer. So yeah, it's just uh, it's a slight tweak. Yeah, expect a bunch of kids to be screaming at their parents to be like, the new character's out, I gotta buy it. <laughs> like it's just another thing like that. Like I gotta get it right now. But yeah. they've hit all the beats. If you're a, if you're a spender, you can get it right this second. If you're a free-to-play user that's a power user that can grind through the tiers and you don't care about you don't care about that you're always playing anyway you'll get it within that month you'll get it within the first two two weeks yep. and if you really just don't care or if you have a life and you're an actual human being and you can't go and sit there and play three to five games a day and spend three hours a night playing video games then you know i mean get best of luck you're not going to see it for another month but you know whatever you're going to grind on your own track and then you know, you'll get the old older content. So I would just say that like they need to be careful, respect the player's time. We can't be uh, doing this whole thing of like engagement, engagement, engagement. By you know, like you need to be playing four hours a day for you know thirty days to be able to get this character. Like that just can't happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that's the hard part with it because in another game, let's say multiverses, that's a great one for me because I played it a lot. Yeah. For the first month. Uh, and then I, ca- I pretty much stopped just waiting for new characters. So I built up a big stash of coins. I can buy like four four characters, um, and that's really advantageous for me. Yeah. But if it were to do the Overwatch structure, and my my boy Fred Flintstone comes out, I yeah. would have to grind. Grind. Because the uh, currency, so, yeah. your currency battle, you know, balance doesn't matter now. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. So it is uh, almost strictly an engagement mechanic. But I do want to kind of talk about the opposite side of that. So let's look at another Blizzard game, Diablo Immortal, mm. which got uh, got shit for being a pay to pay to win game. So, or actually, no, no, not really. It didn't. It's not really okay. I don't know it, that game, that that whole thing got so skewed by yeah, yeah, exactly. Idiot Look, streamers that, just spend you know, what I mean, putting up spend counters and spending thirty yeah, yeah. grand to buy gems. No, actually, like, yeah. So just play the is, game. <laughs> the Diablo is actually not truly pay to win. Uh, I'll talk about it. let's just say um, I don't know any top any top uh, game like let's just say Game of War or something. Mm-hmm. I, I I don't I don't know it directly. But basically, it's like you, that's where you actually pay, and then you instantly get more power. I mean, this, yes. this is for most most top mobile games. Yes. So he, he, I, I just want to point out some of the, the flaws in the arguments. So one one would say, oh, um, I want to I want to be able to buy buy and pay and get power instantly and it's like now that moves to pay to win so what 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 diablo immortal did was like okay let's put some engagement in there now you have to at least run the dungeon so that's that's not pay to win but now it doesn't respect the player's time you Mm -hmm. know there's there's like this balance and it's 
it's all in like the perception for the player and um at least it seems like especially with uh, a louder community like reddit they almost never they always just take the negative side of either one of these paths so oh, it's, it's just that, that that's just like kind of my frustration with reading these comments and it's like are you guys thinking about the other side because you're complaining about the other side the whole time so you're complaining either way it co- um, they will complain regardless yeah, they'll just yeah. complain regardless i look i mean end of the day blizzard needs to make money and you, if you want to go and say but they're a massive corporation in the business. yeah they like how do they get there because of this you know what i mean it's yeah. i don't think this is even nasty tactics i actually think this is just like it's it, it is a good evolution of onboarding for them from the business case it's not bad they're thinking about their player types and it's, you know i mean it, it'll work out in the end hopefully for them but yeah it will be very frustrating for like the average user you know just the the player that that can't you mean just can't put in the time you know but that's not their payer there or sorry they're not respecting that player as a, or or you know as a non-payer because they don't care it's like you don't really play my game and you're only playing it casually uh so why should i support you as a as a character you know as a player archetype like why wouldn't you be ranked lower and if you wanted to be a higher ranked player then why don't you just spend money now right like you're the perfect person to, at the bottom of that tier, try to convert into that major purchase at least once every two or three months. But, um, you know I mean, we'll just see how, how it all plays out. You know what I mean? People will just rage regardless. Like, yeah. But we'll just see. The biggest thing is, is to me, is going to be how long does it take to really get that character on the free-to-play track? Right. And what is really the engagement there? Because if they mess that up, and don't respect the player's time there, then there's there's real good case for war. You can't just go and say I'm trying to convert every single player over to this thing. Like that's that to me is not right. So you should be trying to say like, well, it's it's two weeks out, right? But then you have that soft balance of like, well, if it's two weeks out, then why am I spending ten bucks now? Blah blah blah. Like you know, and we'll see what what that ends up looking like because. And also, what is the price of the battle pass by itself? Because if you're putting new characters behind the battle pass, um, how much money are you going to be charging for those things? Now, is it going to be twenty five dollars? You know, uh, is it going to be one hundred and eighty days? Like, how long is how long is this you know this pass going to be? But tying then the battle passes, theming them to new character releases is going to be really advantageous for their live ops content calendar. Right, because they'll be able to theme all of those items within the track. Are going to have to have some sort of semblance, you know. Usually, have some sort of semblance to that character, to its history, to whatever its lore is, and stuff like that too. So, I'm curious to see how all of that handles. But like, that's you know, we'll just see. Time will tell. Timing is the big thing that matters here. Yeah, and I'll talk about the uh, just to do a complete talk about this. The the other angles to the argument. So. some people might say, oh, why don't I just have it be a $40 game like Overwatch and then have everything come out? So two, there's two parts about that. One, I would never buy Overwatch 2 for 40 bucks. No, uh, not a it, chance. It needs to look completely different <laughs> yeah. and have, you know, a whole a lot of characters. <laughs> like, nobody, seriously, nobody but the hardcore are going to buy that. Um, so free-to-play is very... Free to play is very advantageous for a lot of people who are definitely, yeah, not willing to pay that, including myself. So I would be lost if we went with that model. And then the other part is now, um, it's a live game. It's a live game. You cannot have, or you can try, but you really cannot have a live game that doesn't have recurring revenue. You will run out of money by definition eventually. Yeah. And actually, uh, there's a there's a relevant game to or, this. Or so, players. You know, if you have yeah. a $40 premium purchase, like, you've already cut half, you know I mean, three quarters of the amount of people that are actually just going to come into your title. You know I mean? If, yep. you know, I mean, how am I going to share it with, you know, especially if I have to get five friends to go and do it, and if five friends have to buy it all for 40 bucks, it's like, dude, I can't even get play, my friends to buy $15 games just to play <laughs> yeah. with me. I've been wanting to play Valheim since, like, the last couple of updates, and these guys are like, hmm, what's that like? Yep. Vikings? Hmm. Uh... Mm. it's like all right okay cool whatever but yeah 
So yeah, so to uh, support having uh, more characters over time, what Overwatch 1 did was loot boxes. And they made a good amount of money with loot boxes, but of course you have you know, you have that other party that's like, oh man, loot boxes are the devil. And then, so that, that I guess that all goes to show like, yes, you will have complaints about monetization in any direction other than being totally free to play. <laughs> uh, and yeah, just forever, which is basically impossible. You know, yeah, like not, not to harp on this whole thing. I do wonder how much they've learned from Heroes of the Storm in this case as well, too. Here's the Storm free to play character MOBA um, is already you know could be in the same structure that that Overwatch is going to, and I think that that's an interesting thing case study to try and see like hey has Blizzard actually done this already, like have they got the good data to say like this already works and that this is a proven model for them and I mean Heroes of the Storm is a great game, uh, I play Heroes of the Storm I'll I'll keep playing it every now and again uh, and I'll jump back in. And there's too many characters for me to earn right now, so I'm just, you know, I'm the casual, and I'm coming in playing with my character roster that I have. Um, but they have the same type of problem where daily rewards give uh, soft currency, soft currency plays into the market. Um, I can, you know, depending on how much those, how much I'm earning, the sinks are not enough, and then when I'm up against, when I will be up against the cap of all of, having all of the characters, I will have an influx, I'll have more soft currency than anything, so I'll have the same problem. I wonder if they if they moved to a sharded economy more like um, uh, more like character battlers like um, Marvel Strike Force like um, Galaxy of Heroes like where oh. I'm doing daily quests to get shards of of a character and once I get X amount of those shards then I can unlock that character. Wow, it, that'd be interesting in one of these types of games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, it, it keeps you on the same track, and then whenever you see one shard of that thing, even though if it's one shard of 50, they still feel rewarding because it's, it's like base level progression. It's like, I still got that thing. I still made progress towards getting that character, but I can make progress towards many characters on different vectors and still feel good about it. So I'm curious to see like what that model would work. Let's say, like, hey, it's daily quests, or it's these special quests, or whatever whatever they want. Uh, I get a legendary special quest and it has two shards of X character. It's like, yeah, that character's in the battle pass right now. Well, great, let me get two of the shards and then maybe over time I might be able to unlock that character, right? That's not a bad feeling. And those things have are proven to work in terms of, you know, keeping the player engaged, keeping the player enjoying those things. It's just you have to know that, like, at some point I can get this. I, I can have some consistent vector where I could be getting these shards, whether it be daily reward calendars, daily quests, whether it be specific battle tracks or something like that. I just need to know that I can still earn earn that thing over time. But yeah, um, one of the uh, one of the effects of sharded economy is that it it does give uh, player choice mm -hmm. because let's say you do have six quests and they each give different shards, you could be like, oh, I don't care about these four characters, but I do like these two. Yeah, so you can just opt into those two. And the other part is um, a lot of games that have a lot of different modes uh, like to use this because it encourages you to play these different modes. Move so around it, the box. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's a different tool, but um, actually could have some interesting ramifications for this. Yeah, but we'll see what happens there. I want to get on a Street Fighter. <laughs> okay. I want to talk yeah, Street Fighter versus Tekken 8. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've got only like 10 minutes for this, but we can oh, squeeze crap. it in. How long did we... Do we literally uh, just go an hour on, on just that? Almost. I think we're at 50 minutes or so. Frick, whatever. Uh, or 44. <laughs> but yeah, no, we can do it. No. Uh, the Street Fighter... 48. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, the, the two fighting game titans have put out their trailers, and both of them are amazing, but both of them are very different in uh, what they're trying to mm -hmm. sell you and advertise. Um, Street Fighter VI, um, more advertised, a big open world, and uh, a, a lot of uh, systems. And basically, it's almost like Smash-like in terms of... Because Smash Brothers, by default, has a lot of modes. It's, it's like all about the fun and even items. And Street Fighter VI showed off a lot of that. Uh, Tekken Seven was very similar to its old gameplay, but they just up cranked the graphics to, to, to max. And uh, but yeah, so both are have been pretty exciting. So More I'm curious particles. You... That's it. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's um, my, overall, the fighting game 
genre needs to evolve. Overall, they need to work on better loops, better social, better everything, better story. Uh, and Tekken, what I've seen from that trailer, it's the same game. You, you could yep. put every other game in front of me, and it still wouldn't beat Tekken Tag Team Tournament. You know what I mean? Like, that was at least unique in its own sense, and I could play bowling as a random Easter egg, right? Like, you mean, but what do I get out of Tekken 8 that I couldn't get out of Tekken 7, what I couldn't get out of Tekken 6? Like, it's, none of these totally. things seem to, and I just can't believe that they that they keep putting money into, into these releases that they think is, they must, must think is going to be worth a $60 premium purchase or whatever, you know what I mean? I just don't think that that's, like, available or advantageous for them. Now, where Street Fighter has finally tried to break the mold here, and thank Christ, it, you know what I mean, this is low-hanging fruit, people. Like, it's not it's not a big thing. Because yeah. they focus on the world around around the gameplay. Trying to build, you know what I mean, as we've talked about it before, it's like, these fighting schools are dojos, right? Like, I'm going to this place, and I'm going to be playing with these players, and I'm going to be fighting against them, and we all have our own unique style. Why not focus in on that? Focus in on the meta of... of of getting players to self-indulge, you know, into clans and everything else like that, um, and and have those, you know, abilities to uh, play together in more interesting ways. Now, where I think that this is going to fall down is actually in the social aspect of things, and we we took a look at that screenshot of the the battle yeah, the arena bet. area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's here's my problem with this. Voice chat is not going to be there, right? VoIP is not going to be be there. Uh, I'm how so? How am I going to be able to engage with players around me in a meaningful way? Uh, is has always been the problem of the player hub, especially when I'm just there and the only way that I can communicate with other players is emojis, or dancing or whatever, right? If I don't know you, and I saw you playing like fighting on the big screen i guess i can come over and challenge you but if you don't accept my challenge the only repercussion i have is to either send you a message like literally like go to your player tag send you a message which is not necessarily what pe people want because that's taking the social outside and into the bigger you know into the playstation network right. or whatever right discord or whatever yeah yeah well how am i going to do it on discord if if it's all you know within yeah. the network right so right. for me it's like okay well everything is dead up until that moment like you're not a real player like everybody else around me is still an npc and i'm not really going to be able to uh super imposedly engage without without good ways to do so and i don't know what that looks like right now now it is nice that they are, they are sticking everything within the, the game and that's going to feel you know very metaverse-esque right Am I, am yeah. I gonna, is a major tournament going to be happening and I'm going to be able to log into the player hub and everybody's going to be there in the, you know, 100 players in the player hub and we're all sitting down and watching the thing? Like, that's going to be kind of sick, right? If it works. Absolutely. If it worked. If it worked. I think that's going to be awesome. It's going to be a different experience of trying to do the, like, give me that feeling of, of being in a stadium, being with, uh, being with everybody else uh, at the same time. But I'll still be watching the Twitch stream. So which one is going to be the better one? You know, I'm, I I don't get commentary, you know, within the game, and I'm not going to get that big big league commentary. So I'm still going to have a second monitor that's going to be listening to that. So how much am I going to superimpose into? I have to log in because this this tournament right. is happening versus just, and eh, this is still a bad worse experience than the Twitch experience, right? So that's that's definitely curious to me. Uh, one of the huge things is obviously uh, character customization, self uh, identification within player identity. There is massive. None of these games have any sort of customization loop of what my character looks like, who am I, can I fight, you know, can I fight like this? And I think that that's brilliant because it's bringing in some of the things that were great from like WWE, uh, any of the wrestling games. Right, like I can make my own wrestler and I can wrestle on the world stage, right, against all of these best players. But I am curious of how the move sets are going to 
subset into all of that stuff, right? I saw like a whole training loop where you had to basically go find the other characters to learn their move sets. Well, it's like, well, does that stop me from, you know, I mean, even wanting to play my own character in tournaments because my move set's not leveled up enough and I haven't unlocked these moves and does that just automatically put me at a disadvantage so I don't want to play my character I have to play Ken I have to play Ryu I gotta play right. somebody else to to fill that void until I level everything up like maybe I don't know but yeah I have no idea what the details are they haven't announced it yet anyways so yeah it does matter but it seemed like there wasn't just the player hub it seemed like that the, there was also other worlds and other places you could go and just like randomly battle. Oh yeah, out, absolutely. Which that would be sick. Like yes. everybody, all of these characters just sitting around and just watching yeah. these other two other characters, like dudes, just go and, and, and beat the yeah, shit out of each other. Actual street fight. Actual street <laughs> fights. <laughs> this is a real evolution. It's great. I am yes. super excited for this. Uh, to be perfectly honest, just just as a they this genre needs to do something more man like you gotta do something more but yeah yeah i'll i'll say i i haven't signed up for a beta since wow vanilla like 20 <laughs> years ago i signed that's, up for this as a lie <laughs> <laughs> i signed up for this beta I, I I was I have I felt a lot of the same feelings you do, which is wow. This I don't even care about the fighting. You know, I'm a fighting game player, but I don't I, I don't really care to even see the matches and stuff. I I really want to see the world and how they implement it. It it looked like Mario Odyssey, in interesting ways, you know, and and just think of it from like a, from a live ops perspective too, right? New characters, can come with their own zones. New characters are going to come with their own training mode where I can then take my character and then go, you know, train, battle, learn those new moves, and then incorporate those into my move sets. That customization loop is going to allow for, hopefully, more diversification of gameplay, but I don't know how much players have been able to change up their move sets, like, outside of the individual character up until now, right? But if I can take a little block from this person, a little block from this person, a little block from here... Like, I get a bigger loop, right? I'm, I'm definitely able to make some more interesting combos. But is it, you know, interesting combos pieced together from other character types? Then, yeah, but, like, it all kind of will come together in, in the end there, you know? The biggest thing for me, do, do you know, is this game going to be... A, it's got to be a premium game, right? It's going to be a big budget <laughs> retail game. They haven't announced it. I think it would be crazy if they, um, if they two months from now, dropped free to play but I, I i doubt it i really doubt it see this is the problem right is that if i'm gonna have and this is the problem right now like street fighter 5 and stuff like that right the game is dead you go yeah. online like you try to join a lobby or something like that like you're waiting a minute so you have to have players that you know own that game and are playing that exactly. game and are active exactly. within that community and that's not good so like you know, not to be like, why isn't it, you know, I mean, everything should be free to play, but like, in this might be a great call for saying, hey, it's Street Fighter, and we need to elevate prestige of players, and we need to really show that off, and the only way to really do that is to have a lot of, lot more players than what we're used to having, and then I'm curious of like, what is that going to do for server structure, because in the past, this is not a company that is well known for doing good online play, right? Even just lobbies by themselves have sucked. Even just Absolutely. even just disconnects, right? Like I'm I'm fighting you and I'm beating you, and then you just disconnect from the game, like you just like pull pull the Ethernet cord, right? Then they've had horrifying resolve times around those things and, and real abuse at times, like where players will just abuse those bugs to get to like cancel their ELO or something Absolutely. like that. Like cancel the loss and that's going to be a problem. Like these are all challenges that that they're going to have to face. But goddamn, do I welcome these challenges? Yeah. Um, thank Christ, because you know, I mean, something needs to change, and Tekken needs to get their finger out of their bloody arse because, <laughs> like, you just can't keep releasing the same title over and over and over again. It's it's been yeah. ridiculous. This is, I don't get it. They don't serve their player base. 
you make one game and you do it badly. It's like, for fuck's sake, you know? Yeah. Basically, I agree with all your assessments. Tekken will remain just a hardcore game unless they see this and they're like, okay, we, we should step it up and add some kind of some kind of side mode. Is there any way in your mind that Tekken can can be better, be more interesting right now with just, you know what I mean, you got six months to launch, you've just seen Street Fighter's trailer, you guys have put out your own two weeks prior, and nobody knew that they were working on anything like this, and you're all of a sudden, you're an exec, you're a top, the top lead game designer, what do you do? To, to as a as a there's a serious answer is no because tekken has a monopoly on that 3d fighting sort of style there's no doa there's no virtual fighter there's no soul there's soul no soul caliber, caliber. Yeah. so yeah if you like that style of game you buy tekken you play it and that's why it's the most played game uh on steam out of all the fighters because they have a monopoly so they're not going to really innovate that much they're not even doing a <laughs> rollback uh which is you know the net code that every fighting game needs right now uh they they haven't even done that and they're not going to because they don't need to people are still going to play it because they have to yeah but you so, see that's i think that's the thing so you you would just say you just release you don't give a shit you're just like that's that's what's gonna happen going. yeah yep. yeah you just keep going but uh yeah i think we're we're out of time but really yeah the the street fighter thing gives me hope it's really good to see that happen my hope with it my hope is um, one of the one of the greatest things about WoW mm-hmm. and why it was so fun to play was every time I hopped onto WoW, I had ten friends already playing the game. So I was like, hey, you, 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 you guys want to group up? Yeah. Cool. Let's go. If Street Fighter can keep people in their hub world, just doing stuff in in their open world Shenmue land or whatever, and you can be like, hey, you guys want to play? That's awesome. But right now, right now, it's like you see some friends on Steam. And you're like, hey, you wanna you wanna fire up Street Fighter so we can play it? It's just too much friction. Makes so sense. So I, yeah. I hope we can have that uh, a hangout game where you just hang out in the world. I want that, and I need there to be a way for uh, better better mechanics for players to be able to socially talk. You know, to to okay, build yeah. those relationships within the game, and it can't yeah. just be around fighting. It it has to be. They do have that DJ thing. You can DJ in the game. <laughs> Stupid <laughs> shit. Dude. We're Fortnite, man. We're Fortnite. It's all metaverse. It's all the same. But hey. yeah, there's loads. Of, there's loads of tricks and, and of the tricks at play here. But we'll see. We'll see. All right, Calvin. Thank you. Enjoy yep, yourself. Yep. All right, and have a good. All right. Have a good Friday.